Hey, Max Q, come check this out. What are you guys doing? I made a voodoo doll. You can't just put Rob's name on a doll and then it becomes a voodoo doll. Yeah, you can, watch this. It's the build it segment off the top of the start of the show. And we're gonna talk about how to get speed in a short space. Now watch this. And then, and, and then, and then it's gonna be talk nerdy. We're gonna talk about nerdy things to help your game, especially when it comes to mirroring other players. And we've got the keep it simple strano segment where I will keep it simple to help your game. And then we'll come back with Rob's right, where I'll tell you something I'm right about to help your game. And then it's G B and, and, and strategy next. Man, give me that. <laughs> and then it's it's mental game and, and build it at the, at the very end of the show. Oh. Guys, let's hit it with the hammer. Wait, Carolyn, use the bigger hammer. Ah, okay, yeah, we're gonna finish with time to rise. Are you ready out there? Because it's time to build here in the Golf Kingdom. Welcome to the number one golf variety show in the world, the Golf Kingdom. Are you ready to build your game? Here's your host, Rob Strano. Welcome to the Golf Kingdom. And it's time to get the show rolling, especially now that I've confiscated this little bit of nonsense from the crew. So let's get that out of here. And look, I'm all better now. They can't control me, but I can control you. I can help your game. And we're gonna start off here with a build it segment centered around speed. Everybody wants more speed and more power. And I see players getting it wrong. You're applying power and speed at the wrong spot. You're trying to get it up here. What you have to understand in golf is we want power and speed in a very small place in a very small segment. I'm gonna show you an example of a video that has that going on, and I'm gonna show you what you do wrong and how to apply it and get it right. So as we come over here to the 60 inch screen, I'm gonna run a video here, and let's look at the video, and you're gonna see speed in a very small space. Boom, look, it's a one inch punch, and look at, he's just knocking this guy over, it's just a simple, small, boom, little punch. Bang, right there, he's knocking him over. That is like golf, that is speed in a small space. Because as you get to impact with the club, it's a small space and you get this boom at impact. But I see players doing it wrong and applying the speed at the wrong time in the wrong place. Let's come back over here now and let's talk about the fix for this. How do we get speed in the right spot? And let me show you what I see happening wrong. So impact bags, I've just got a backpack here. You can use an old backpack as an impact bag. But I see players, when I have them hit the impact bag at the academy, they'll come down and they'll hit the bag and they'll push it along. They just knock it over there like that. They aren't really popping the bag for speed. They're just kind of coming down with speed and they're kind of just moving the bag and rolling it over and knocking it over there. What we want to do is we want to pop it. it you want to make it like this. You ever snap someone with a towel? We want to snap someone with a towel bang like that, that's speed in a small spot. It's this moving pow, pow, pow. So you kind of wet the end of this towel and you can really get some snap on it. So the question is, how do you get the same snap in golf like you get with a towel with the golf club? Let me show you what I mean. So I bring my little backpack back here. And like I said, you don't need to spend money on an impact bag, you can just buy a little backpack. Take your club, flip it upside down. When I pop this bag, I am popping it with the, with, the, with the club in a very short space here and see how I'm popping it and it's not getting rolled over. It's not just going 10 feet away. So once again, the wrong one is you hit it and roll the bag over and move it way over there. So how do you practice this at the golf course? Grab your golf bag. I'm gonna grab this bag. I'm gonna lay it down here just like this. And what you're gonna practice is, you're gonna practice turning the club upside down and just popping the bag, boom, boom. See, I'm doing it in a short space. I'm getting this snap and this pop here. I'm coming down and pow. You can hear how loud that is, okay? That's how little guys like me hit it a long way, is that in this short space, I'm creating pop. I'm not coming through and rolling the bag over like that. I'm coming through, through and pow. So practice this. Get your club, flip it upside down. Get a backpack, get your golf bag, and practice in a short space coming through and 
pow, creating that speed. I guarantee you, you'll hit it farther on the golf course. It's time, it's time for talk, talk nerdy. Yeah, we're gonna talk something nerdy to help your game and, oh, oh my gosh, I'm yawning. And am I getting you? That's the question. How many of you yawned out there with me? You know what that's called? That's called mirror neuron system. When someone yawns and you yawn back, you're mirroring them and your neurons are catching them yawning and you're yawning with, with them. And the interesting thing is the closer the person is to you, not space, but as in relationship wise, the more likely you are to mirror, mirror neuron system them. Now, the question is mirror, mirror neuron system. That's harder to say than you think. How does that help your game? How does mirroring help your game? This nerdy thing we do of AI, okay? What's the nerdy way that helps your game? Let's come to the big screen and talk about mirroring. Because I grew up at a golf course. I hardly ever had a golf lesson. We didn't have a practice area. So it's not like now where you got just the ability to hit tons of golf balls. I played more golf than I ever practiced it. And I grew up with four tour players at my course, Bob Goldie, Jay Haas, Jerry Haas, Frank Connor, and I mirrored them. So much like this mirror yawning thing makes you yawn, I would watch them and I would mirror what they do. Now I'm gonna give you two things. I want you to mirror neuron in your golf swing to help you get better. Okay, so get ready here. We're gonna do this together. I'm gonna to put the golf club away to start with because I don't want you to have a club to do this. I want you to simply be able to mirror me or get up in front of your mirror and look in the mirror and do this perfectly. Number one thing, here we go. We're gonna mirror neuron. Get in your setup with me at home. Everybody up off your couch. Get in your setup and we're gonna go back and we're gonna make sure as we go back, the lead arm is parallel to the ground and this back arm is above it. See that? We're not here where you can see the elbow underneath. We're gonna go back and keep the elbow above. So mirror neuron right here. Boom, boom. Not here, not there. Now grab a golf club. Same thing, we're gonna to try to keep the trail arm above the lead arm. We're gonna go there and we're gonna stop. There you go, trail arm above lead arm. First mirror thing right there. Now, mirror thing number two, you're gonna spin the other way. So the mirror will be here. Be looking at the back side of yourself. As you go back, we've got trail arm above. Now take the hands and make the club point more vertical, kind of between your feet and where the ball would be right here. Not like this and not like that. So mirror neuron, here we go. Trail arm above, take your hands, point the club up here somewhere between your toes and where the ball would be. If you can mirror these things, you'll get in good spots to hit a golf ball, especially in this spot in the backswing. So get in your mirror at home, access this mirror neuron system that we've all got, and you'll find your swing will improve by just simply applying the mirror to your golf game. Okay, are you ready for something easy and quick to help your game? Yes, it's the KISS segment. <coughs> Keep it simple, Strano. Yes, something easy, quick to help your game. We're gonna talk about hip turn. A big part of the backswing is making sure that the hips don't ding dong as we move. You want this hip to go straight back behind you this way, this pocket like you're grabbing it going that way. But the question is, how do you feel it or get a sense of where it's going? Yeah, you can kind of go, okay, I'm doing it right, but you really don't have a reference point. Well, I'm gonna give you a reference, something simple to do it. And here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna grab your putter cover. So if you have one of these putter covers, that's like an L, okay? You're gonna use it as your reference point. And it's, it takes a little work. You're gonna stick it right in your pants right here next to your right hip, and you're gonna point it out like this. So you can see it's pointed straight out to the side. That's your reference. You have a pointer now as you turn. So if you go back and it continues to point that way, I'm swinging back and it's still pointing that way, that would be the wrong move. This is where the kiss drill comes in. Ready? Here's where it's gonna get simple. You're gonna take this right here and point it over there behind you. So as you swing, make the head cover point back over there. See, it's pointed that way. I'm doing it correctly. I am not pointing it still this way. This hip is actually turned this way and the head cover is pointed there. You can see it from this angle as I swing back. I'm not pointing it at the camera. I'm not pointing it at you at home. I'm pointing it back here. Here you go. It's going back that way. Very important. You've got a reference point. Use your head cover, something you've got. This way you can figure out where this hip is pointed. Now, stay tuned. We got some more awesome stuff coming up for you here in the Golf Kingdom, faster than one swing and one putt.
Chrome Soft isn't your typical tour ball. It's the modern tour ball. From cover to core, we've re-engineered every aspect of Chrome Soft to create our fastest, highest quality, most consistent tour ball ever. Breakthrough innovation has created more distance and built a ball for total performance. The new Chrome Soft. This ball changes everything. Well, if I'm going backwards, that must mean we are back to the Golf Kingdom. Thanks for joining us for another great show to help your golf game. And it's one of my favorite segments because it involves you guys, my students. You're the star here because in a lesson, you know what I've heard? I've heard this. Rob's right. That's right. Rob's right. I'm helping this player and he's doing something. He said, oh my gosh, Rob, you're right. Yeah, I am right. And it helped him a bunch. So the question is, what is something that I helped him with that will help your game? So here's what we were talking about. We were working on aim with him. And he was walking in and getting set up, and he was doing this. So I'm going to grab a 7-iron here. We're going to use the alignment stick going towards the screen. So he would walk in, he would get his aim, and he'd look at his intermediate target about three feet in front of him. So that's what you want to do is pick a spot at least three, four feet in front of you, aim the club along that. So he gets set up, and he'd look at that intermediate spot out ahead of him, and then he'd just go ahead and swing. He never looked up to see where he was going. So the problem was we didn't have a stick there because he was trying to learn to aim without an alignment stick, just like you would on the golf course. So he'd walk in, get set, look at his spot, and then never look up to see where he was aimed or at least give his brain and his eyes feedback to his target. And then he'd swing away and he'd go, oh, that ball was to the right. And I'd go, well, yeah, you were aimed a little bit to the right because you never looked to see where you're actually going. And he'd go, I didn't look up, you know what, you're right. I was like, yeah, I am right. You never look to see where you're going. So when you get in, so I'm gonna come at you guys now. When you walk in and aim, you're gonna aim over your intermediate target, you're gonna get set, and then you're gonna to look to see your target. You're gonna look up like I'm looking at the camera to see where am I aimed here. Yeah, club face, intermediate target, they're all lined up together. If I walk in, just look here, and I don't look up at the camera and then swing, I could hit it over there, I could hit it over here, because I never looked and gave my eyes any targeting information on where I was going. So whether it's full swing or putting, in putting players do the same thing. Players will walk in and they'll aim their feet first and they'll put the putter in and then they'll look and they'll go ahead and putt. Well, your feet aren't what you're trying to aim. You're trying to aim the putter itself. You're trying to aim the line on the back of the putter where you wanna go. So you wanna keep your feet close together, just like this, come in, aim the putter, aim the club, make sure that's aimed correctly and then put your feet in place. So if you do all this stuff, it'll help you aim better on the golf course. You know what, just like he said, I'm right. When I got him doing it right, the ball started going more in the direction he wanted to go because he was looking at his target, he was seeing where he needed to hit it, and he knew he was confident in where he was going. It's kind of like driving down the road. You wanna make sure you aim the car down your lane, not off into the shoulder and not into the culvert between the, between the two lanes. Do this and you'll get set up, you'll hit more shots where you wanna go because you're aiming where your eyes are telling you to go. Welcome to headquarters, I'm Special Agent R and I am your GIB golfer in black. This is where we talk about the top secret stuff of golf. Yes, the things that only tour players know to help your game. Things you don't realize or have never thought about that help you play the game better in certain circumstances. And what we're gonna talk about here in our special agent moment, our top secret moment is, how do you putt when it's windy out? You Maybe you are going to go play Bandon Dunes or Pebble Beach or somewhere that's really windy, Scotland, Ireland, and the winds are blowing 20, 30 miles an hour. What do you do to not get blown over when you putt and to hit good putts and make it? What do we as tour players know to do to stabilize ourselves when the weather's bad and the winds are up. And I just played a Pro-Am, Special Agent R just played a Pro-Am, where he played in gale force winds, gusting to 40 miles an hour. And I had to stabilize myself to hit good putts. I'm gonna give you the tricks from the tour to help you, and here they are. First thing you do in heavy, heavy winds, winds that are knocking you around, is you widen out your stance. Yes, you get a stronger base by getting wider. That will help stabilize you. Second thing you do, add a little knee bend to your stance. 
So if you have a little bit, add a little more. Lock your knees in place. Now, here's our key thing that only the tour players know to do. We are wider, our knees are bent more. Now, we're going to squeeze our quads, our glutes, which is your rear end, your butt talks, as Forrest Gump would say. So glutes, rear end, core. You're going to squeeze them tight. See, I'm squeezing them tight. I can barely talk here. It's hard to talk as Special Agent R when I've got my, my muscles contracting. Quads, glutes, abs, squeeze them tight. That is called your core. That will lock you down and hold you in place. So when the wind is pounding, if you squeeze, 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 get wider, lock your knees and legs in place, the wind won't bounce you around. And then the other thing to remember is, if you're hit by a gust of wind, back off. When the gust stops, you have 30 seconds till the next gust. So use these key things, these top secret things. I am your golfer in black, Special Agent R. Use these and they'll help you putt better in bad conditions. Okay, I'm your golf general. I'm General Rob. We are here to talk strategy, or in our case, strategy on the course to improve your game. Because it's very important. Golf's a game of strategy. It's about making decisions and doing smart things on the course. And remember, without a plan, there is no attack. Without attack, there is no victory. And we won't have victory when you get done looking at the scorecard. We're gonna talk about something very famous today in the game of golf that most people don't know about. I'm gonna bring up a quote here and we're gonna talk about it. So let's look at the quote. Here comes the quote. It's simple, he explained. I've mapped out every course on tour, starting from the middle of the greens and working back to the tees. I make note of the 150 yard mark in the middle of the fairway and I try to hit every driver second shot there, so I always have a seven iron in. And over the years, I've gotten pretty handy with the seven iron. Now, who is that? That's PJ Tour legend and major championship winner, Billy Casper. He used to play to a seven iron. He loved his seven iron. He practiced with it all the time. He got really, really good at it. So this is back before we had lasers and yardage books. where We had like discs in the middle of the fairway that said you were 150 yards or 150 yard bush or 150 yard pole. These little markers said you're around 150 the hole, never were exact, but you were in that vicinity. And he always played to that yardage. So do you have a favorite club is my question. Maybe it's your nine iron, maybe it's a wedge, maybe it's your seven iron or six iron. Oh my gosh, I just lost my rank. I'm losing rank as I go here. So here's the question I've got for you. What's your favorite club? Give me the answer. Okay, so let's say your favorite club is the nine iron. I'm gonna take you to my home course, uh, St. Clair Country Club where I grew up in Belleville, Illinois. I'm gonna take you through how I would play that course to play to a nine iron length in every hole. If it's your favorite club, maybe we should play to it instead of hitting driver in every hole and maybe your favorite club is not your nine iron. Maybe you don't like your sand wedge from the fairway but you keep hitting it to where you've got sand wedges in. Let's go to the overhead view of the golf course. Now, here's the home court, my home course. The first hole goes right here. I can simply hit a three wood to the bottom of the hill and it's a nine iron on the green. Number two is a par three, not a nine iron. Number three, I can hit driver nine iron in there, I'm good. Four is a par five, if I lay up at the top of the hill, it's a nine iron in. Then we've got a, a short par four, I really can't hit nine iron there. Then we've got a long kind of par five here, I can always lay up to nine iron length. Seven comes down, I go to the top of the hill instead of drive hitting driver, I hit maybe a three iron or four iron at the top of the hill, it's a nine iron in. Number eight right here is a short par four. I can hit driver down there 60 or 70, but I could also hit maybe a long iron or hybrid off the tee and have a nine iron into the green. You seeing how this works? Number nine's a par three, it's kind of a nine iron. And as I go around the backside, 15's a par five here with a big hill in front of the green. If I lay up at the top of the hill instead of knocking it down to the bottom, what club have I got? Nine iron, exactly. Number 17 comes this way. It's a perfect shot to hit a three wood and a nine iron. And then 18, I drive it down to the top of the hill. I lay up and I've got a nine iron in. So there you can see that by playing certain shots with certain clubs off the tee, I leave myself my favorite club into the green. Look at your golf course. Figure out your strategy and see if you can leave yourself more shots with your favorite club. Stay tuned, we got some more great stuff coming up here in The Golf Kingdom. Chrome Soft isn't your typical tour ball. 
It's the modern tour ball. From cover to core, we've re-engineered every aspect of ChromeSoft to create our fastest, highest quality, most consistent tour ball ever. Breakthrough innovation has created more distance and built a ball for total performance. The new Chrome Soft. This ball changes everything. Okay, let's get mental here for all you mental players out there that are mental basket cases. I'm gonna help you with your mental game. I've got the Cerebro helmet on. I'm gonna put my earpiece in and get connected with you. There we go. We are mentally connected now. We're gonna talk about the difference between a swing thought and a swing feel here really quick. Cause it's a really quick thing. A swing thought is just a thought. It only goes to here. This is your head. It's something you're thinking. A swing thought goes to right here and that's all. Where can a swing feel go? A swing feel could go all the way down to my toes. I could take it all the way down there. If I'm feeling footwork, a swing feel goes all the way down. So if I'm trying to feel something with my arms when I swing or feel that hip turn we talked about earlier or shoulder turn or something in my lead knee moving, that's a feeling. That's how we play golf. We get out of the left prefrontal cortex part of our brain and get over on the right side of our brain where all the power is and all the feel is. That's what we want. We want to get in these right spots when we swing and it comes about via feelings, not thoughts. So keep in mind, you have a swing thought. You think about something you want to work on or your coach tells you something you work on and then you convert that thought to a feeling. Everybody's a feel player. You might say you're analytical. You might say you need to think about it, but in the end, it's got to be converted to a swing feel. And if you can get a feel for your swing, you'll stop being a mental basket case on the golf course. Boy, it's a bonus build a segment. Yeah, what a great golf kingdom. You're getting two build it segments to help your game. I know how much you love to build your game here in the golf kingdom. And we're gonna talk about the finish of your swing. It's really important because remember, you're trying to hit a specific tiny spot on the club base. And if you're swinging and you're wobbling around when you're done, maybe you finish swinging and you finish in a different spot. You finish way back here and the ball was there. That's not good. Maybe you swing and you wobble forward like this. That's not good either. Because remember, the ball is not moving and we are trying to hit a very tiny, tiny spot on the face. Now, this drill is a tasty, fun one if you pick the right thing to help your game, but it'll also help your finish and you can do it at home. You don't have to practice it only at the golf course because I know sometimes you viewers, you can't get to the golf course maybe because of weather or work. Here's what you're gonna do. Grab a golf club, set up, swing to a finish, and think of your favorite little tasty sweet treat, cupcake. Okay, so I'm gonna swing through, I'm gonna go cupcake, one, two, three, and stay there. So it'll look like this, here we go. Cupcake, one, two, three, hang on. Cupcake. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, Okay, that was a yummy cupcake and it was a perfect finish. So once again, think of your treat, cupcake, and then count to three and you'll make sure you have a good bounce finish. So cupcake, one, two, three, and that is a sure way to build it and get your finish correct on the golf course. Well, maybe mentally or in my case, physically, I'm still swallowing chocolate cupcake, mentally or physically enjoying a sweet treat to make you hit some sweet golf shots. Here we go, time to rise. I love time to rise. Something quick and awesome for you at home with golf and life. We're gonna talk about breathing. <sighs> Something we do every day, right? But do you do it correctly on the golf course and in life? Like for example, I have an eye watch. It's always telling me to breathe. Why? Because deep cleansing breaths are healthy for you to deal with pressure, stress, and life, especially on the golf course. Now when you breathe in, it's important you do it correctly. Do you understand that when you take a deep breath, your belly goes out? So when I do it correctly, and get a deep breath, my stomach goes out, my belly goes out, because my diaphragm pushes down. On the golf course, when you're stressed, when you've played a bad hole, maybe you've got a pressure shot, take a deep breath and hold it in, and then breathe it out your mouth. 
in life, if you're having stress in life, deep breath. Now, here's what I want you to practice doing. These deep breaths, see how long you can take to do it. Don't make it be, that's not a deep breath. That's a fast breath. It may be deep, but it's fast. Make that deep breath as slow as you can. So under the pressure of a golf shot or the pressure of a life moment, just take a moment and take that deep breath. And see how slow you can take it, see how long you can make it last. The things that last the longest in life are sometimes the best. The best for you also is a deep, long, slow breath. Do that, it'll help you on the golf course and relax you in life. Well, whoosh, Golf Kingdom has come and gone, and we did some awesome stuff to help your game in this show. And as always, we're gonna recap it in our Stranotes. Yes, I'm gonna recap three of the segments that are key things for you to remember. Let's look at what we did. Right off the bat, in the first Build It segment, I taught you a great drill to get speed in a tight space. Yes, we have just a little bit of space before the ball to create speed, and I taught you the correct way to do it. Then, I asked you, do you have a favorite club? Well, if you do, in the strategy segment, I talked about maybe your course strategy should play to your favorite club, and we discussed how to do that. Then we had another segment. It was a bonus build -up segment where I talked about the finish, and I gave you a sweet treat and a countdown. Cupcake, one, two, three, hold your finish to hit better shots. Now, to get more great Golf Kingdom stuff, there's two cool ways to do it. If you have an Alexa device, enable the Golf Kingdom skill, and you'll get a free audio tip from me, your host, Rob Strano, every day. Also, download the Golf Kingdom app for your game. Yes, we have a free app out there. All the shows are there, all the segments are there, and there's something daily from me, your host, Rob Strano, to help your game, where I give you motivational stuff, more tips. So go to your app store and download the Golf Kingdom app to get all kinds of fun stuff, even stuff from behind the scenes here in the studio when we film to help your game. Thanks for joining me here in the Golf Kingdom. Ready? All together? We're gonna breathe, ready? Namaste.